Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'd like to feature a tweeter that a customer had sent to me and they wanted me to design and build a horn that would replace the existing uh, tweeter bezel on this. So this is the LCY K100 Pure Ribbon Tweeter and it's a very small ribbon tweeter. It measures only 25 millimeters tall on the diaphragm. And so you can see here that the manufacturer has added a kind of a aluminum circular uh, tweeter bezel and it does transition abruptly from the rectangular diaphragm to the circle that you see here and so I'm not sure um, what the idea was there but regardless um, when the customer said that they had these tweeters and they wanted me to uh, see what I could do with them I was I was thinking yeah this could be interesting um, notwithstanding the tweeter bezel uh, it looks like the the body of the tweeter looks like it has potential at being a super tweeter uh, that might be actually quite good. Um, they're not cheap, um, these tweeters, and so I was thinking, yeah, there could be some potential here. And so um, in this video, I'm going to do a direct comparison between the stock tweeter and the uh, wood horn that I've come up with. So let's uh, get started on that. So this is uh, the tweeter or the horn that I came up with measures about uh, 16 centimeters wide. It's solid hardwood. And so actually I'm going to skip right to my solid work screen here just so you can see the, the horn in more detail. So now I was able to use the existing screws to mount the horn. And so it just simply mounts such as like, like you see there. So now um, for testing of the stock tweeter, you just saw there, I machined a solid piece of walnut and I also recessed the tweeter uh, in so that this just, you know, gives me the best chance of letting, seeing what the tweeter can do uh, in its most common configuration, which I would suspect is going to be uh, used in a two way or a three way. So um, let's look at the measurements for the stock tweeter. Actually, let's look at the what the manufacturer publishes. So they're, they're stating that they want it at 7 kilohertz or higher. So it is more of a super tweeter. And you can see here that they have very flat response and off axis in the you know 12 kilohertz region. They're showing very little um, uh, fall in the off axis. There's a there's at the 20 kilohertz they're showing um, that it's only down about 6 dB. So they're claiming that it's about a 90 degree listening window even up to 20 kilohertz. And so I'm going to do off axis colored polar maps for the stock tweeter and we'll just uh, see if that is indeed the case. So if we look at the published or my measurements for the tweeter, you can see here that it deviates quite a bit from the published data. And you can see that there is a, a peak at seven and then a dip at nine, and then it's relatively flat beyond that. So also looking at the burst decay, uh, we do see uh, some of these issues coming through in the burst decay where at around 10 kilohertz, we see some uh, pretty strong resonance. This is also shown in the cumulative spectral decay. We can see a very strong resonance at 10 kilohertz. Now, Step response uh, is very fast rise and fall. However, we do see this anomaly here, and I've just kind of zoomed in and pointed to it. Within a millisecond, we still get this, um, you know, dip in the step response, which is really unusual for a tweeter. And I strongly suspect that's due to the circular bezel that they've added, where there's going to be a strong reflection back. Uh, in like a first order reflection back towards the diaphragm as a result of that abrupt physical transition. So off axis polar map, we can see that uh, if we compare what we mentioned earlier, uh, at around 12 kilohertz, we're getting around a 60 degree uh, uh, coverage pattern. And then by 20 degrees or 20 kilohertz, sorry, the directivity has narrowed to probably about 40 degrees. So we are seeing relatively narrow directivity results with this tweeter, which uh, is not in keeping with what's been published. So like I mentioned, um, the 12 kilohertz region, they're showing probably 100 or 110 uh, degree coverage pattern, which uh, certainly isn't the case from what I was able to measure. If we look at the 
horn that I had designed and built here. Um, you can just see that I've mounted it there. So now the frequency response um, changes somewhat. Now, if we do a direct overlay, the red being the stock tweeter and the blue being with the addition of the horn, you can see that uh, I actually get a peak in the nine kilohertz region instead of a dip. I do get an increase in sensitivity in the lower mid range. However, um, it's not really relevant with this tweeter considering that it's intended for seven kilohertz and up. So now looking at the burst decay, we see a mild improvement with that 10 kilohertz region, as well as the uh, cumulative spectral decay, you see a mild improvement, but it is still persistent. So it leads me to think that this uh, is something inherent in the driver. Step response, now I mentioned earlier about that issue there. Now you can see that it's uh, significantly improved. However, it is still there. Now this may be related to what I've done here, which is with my ball nose cutter and the CNC machine, I'm not able to get to a sharp corner. And so there is still an abrupt physical transition in the corners. However, it's pretty smooth uh, in the side walls and then the, to the floor and ceiling of the throat of the horn. And so it still perhaps could be showing up in the step response. Now it could be taken with a file down to a sharp corner, um, but I didn't go to that length. So now the big change comes in the off axis uh, colored polar map with the addition of the horn, you can see that uh, we're getting very wide coverage. And so even at 20 kilohertz, the coverage has improved to 100 degrees. So we've gone from 40 degree directivity to 100 degree directivity. So that's gonna drastically change the overall sound characteristics of the tweeter so that you're getting a much stronger early sidewall reflections in, in your listening room. In fact, it's if we do the math, it turns out that we're gonna have a plus five dB increase in the overall output from the early sidewall reflections. And so significant change there. Uh, looking at distortion with the stock tweeter, I set up a high pass filter at four kilohertz and conducted a multi-tone. So this is a 12 band per octave multi-tone test signal at 90 dB SPL at one meter. And so you can see that the distortion products are minus 45 dB down from the fundamental. So normally when I'm trying to develop a product, I want intermodulation distortion, distortion to be about minus 65 dB down. And so that's kind of my benchmark. And so we're about 20 dB away from achieving that goal. Now we have to consider as well that this is a small ribbon tweeter. And so perhaps we shouldn't expect so much from it as far as output SPL. Um, now, if we compare it to the horn, you can see here that we do get quite a bit lower distortion in the 5K up to around 7K region, but we still have this pesky distortion showing up in the 10 kilohertz region. And so um, I decided just to see if we perhaps should lower the test SPL down to 85 dB. And also I increased the high pass filter from four kilohertz up to eight kilohertz, which is what the manufacturer recommends. And we can see that distortion actually lowers quite a bit um, to the point where we're almost at our target of minus 65 dB. Now um, we can still see though that there's some distortion products still showing up, which I know I'm nitpicking here, but um, we since we see it, let's see if we can actually deal with it. So. Sorry, I just want to see if I'm still recording. Yeah. So what I decided to do is add a little block of 30 PPI open cell foam into the throat. And if this is a resonance that we're seeing in that re in that part of the frequency, then we'll see if that actually helps. And so simply by adding the foam, you can see that we are Im improving the distortion by a, a significant amount. And so um, I would say... Uh, the distortion is now minus 60 dB. So we're almost there. Um, and I think this is more to do with the fact that it's just a small format tweeter and that uh, it wouldn't be used in an application where you need high, SP, high output. And so I would say around 80 dB is where you'd want to be for very, very clean uh, distortionless sound. 
And um, that's going to be typical for a system where you're having an output of around uh, 90, 95 dB as a complete system that's producing bass and mid-range as well. If we look at the frequency response now with the addition of the foam, you can see that it's actually pretty good. Um, the 10 kilohertz peak actually has um, come down a little bit. So um, my conclusion on this, so listening to it, it does sound uh, like your typical pure ribbon tweeter. Um, I would say it's just as good as the via wave um, when you're listening to it at normal listening levels. Now, um, I did try the tweeter just without the bezel, just taking the, the body of the tweeter and setting it on top of um, my speaker and integrating it that way. And it actually sounded excellent. Um, so if you're uh, interested in these ribbon tweeters, I would just suggest taking the bezel off and just using them uh, as a uh, ultra high frequency super tweeter just perched on top of your uh, existing speaker cabinet. So um, yeah, no uh, groundbreaking performance here, uh, but it um, I think it does well within its intended application. So there you have it. Take care and have a great day.